The two big mistakes physios are making treating shoulder pain, that is to say mostly rotator cuff tears, are number one, resting too much, this can make the shoulder stiff, and number two, moving too much. This can make things worse and even cause those partial tears to become full rotator cuff tears. The big issue treating these shoulders is balancing rest and movement. You need to limit the movement for tissue healing, but too much rest can lead to a stiff shoulder. Too much exercise can irritate the tissues or make a partial tear into a full tear. So we need to find a balance between resting and gentle activity. That's why I'm making this video. Don't worry, I have three gentle exercise pathways for you to try with your patients. Plus, I've got a couple of side tangents to make you think about things and a bonus treatment if you stay to the end. The first side tangent concerns the dreaded frozen shoulder. Instead of calling it that, let's just call it a stiff shoulder. Not every stiff shoulder is really a frozen shoulder. Frozen shoulder or adhesive capsulitis is a specific joint capsule tightness problem. It has a freezing phase, it has a thawing phase. But again, not every stiff shoulder is really a frozen shoulder. If it's stiff, we need to work on regaining motion with pain-free exercises. Heat and manual therapy can also help. This is similar to how we handle stiffness after fractures. This is key. When balancing rest and motion, it's okay to be on the side of resting and letting that shoulder get a little stiff. Stiff we can work with. It's the other side that's the, really the problem. You can't work with an inflamed, irritated shoulder. And if it's progressed to a full thickness tear, well then you're wrestling a greased pig with one hand tied behind your back. This is where all the young, inexperienced physios might say, oh, I'd never do that. This never happens to me, but it happens. Maybe your patient stumbles or reaches for something that's falling. Focus on solutions rather than blame. One time I was stretching a patient's shoulder and they sneezed. Luckily I saw that sneeze coming and I relaxed the tension. Then when I was ready, I was able to reapply that tension and the patient got on with a good treatment. Let me give you some context. I didn't just wake up one day and decide to treat shoulders like this. Rotator cuff tears are common. They're even more common in older adults. About 30% of 60 year olds have rotator cuff tears and about 60% after 80 years of age. Partial tears can easily become full tears. That's the zipper effect. Partial tears, or what I'm calling partial tears, is any pain with shoulder effort. And I know that's an oversimplification. I'll explain my diagnosis in a minute. Full tears mean there's no active motion, uh, but full passive motion. And this is what we must avoid. A stiff shoulder is a problem that we can deal with, but a full tear is worse. Don't, things, don't make things worse. My second side tangent here is about rotator cuff surgery. That's a discussion between the doctor and the patient. Physios should stick to their role. And I know we all have opinions. I've had a couple ro uh, partial rotator cuff tears myself. Each time I was able to immobilize in a sling for weeks or months and then gradually restore motion and reintroduce strengthening. I'd probably only consider surgery for a full thickness tear, but I never had that. And it's not really the physio's role to give advice about surgery. Many repairs recover and do well if you follow the post-op protocol and gently reintroduce motion. Remember, don't make things worse. My last side tangent here is a brief story. One doctor I knew was hesitant about referring post-op shoulder patients to physio. He had previously been referring his shoulder patients to surg after surgery uh, right away. But many of his patients developed complete tears, which he attributed to overly aggressive physiotherapy treatments. As a result, this orthodoc wouldn't refer shoulder patients until six weeks uh, post-op. Post I've seen some aggressive physios myself, irritating patients, so I've become more gentle and cautious with physio over the years. That's why I say, don't make things worse. My experience tells me that most shoulder pain comes from soft tissue irritation. This fits with my simplified physio model of diagnosis and treatment. Uh, that's this video here. Based on my three diagnosis, three treatment approach, shoulder pain from a partial rotator cuff tear would be a traumatic injury. So generally the treatment is first education to reintroduce pain-free activity and second, progress through my three phases of treatment as symptoms allow. Stage one is pain control, stage two is recovery of motion, and then progress to stage three, strengthening and closed kinetic chain uh, stability and balance type exercises. This emphasizes pain-free activity exercises. 
This is the big problem with full rotator cuff tears. They're usually stuck in that pain uh, patients and there's no recovery of motion, there's no recovery of strength. Well, sometimes people say maybe sometimes they recover some, uh, but I've only seen a couple of full thickness tears do well. Uh, usually they don't do well. For treatment, I, I had mentioned some of my exercise pathways, but let's put that into a context. Remember, I have three treatment stages. Stage one is pain management. Your physio approach for pain patients is to focus on, number one, education to reduce that irritation and inflammation, relative rest, moderation of activity. This is uh, some self-applied pain relieving modalities for the patient, wear a sling, wear a sling, and wear a sling. Uh, number two, pain management. This is the disinflammation. This is pain control. Passive modalities belong here. Gentle pain-free exercises. For example, for a painful shoulder patient, this can be grip squeezes and pronation supination and elbow active range of motion and neck range of motion. You're working around the problem. Number three, progress to recovery of motion as symptoms reduce, as symptoms abate. Encourage pain-free activity as tolerated. Use the hand and arm as much as comfortable. This should not be painful. Treatment stage two is recovery of motion. This is the exercise pathways I promise to focus on. Number one, education on pain-free exercise to recover motion. Here are two of the pathways to help with that shoulder recovery of motion. The first, pa first pathway is Codman's circumduction. You want to know who Ernest Codman was? Read my book. It's page uh, 398. Cradled Codman's pendulum progresses to a hanging arm Codman pendulum exercise. This leads to leaning over with support or, and a weighted Codman's pendulum exercise. The second pathway is shoulder elbow slide exercises. This starts with table slides. Uh, it can progress to wall slides and wall angels. And that progresses to wall slides with liftoff and wall slides with a band at the hands. Number two, physio assistance to recover range of motion may be appropriate. This is some heat and some manual therapy techniques. Again, this should not be painful. Number three, again, encourage pain-free activity as tolerated. This is using the hand and, and arm as much as possible, as much as comfortable, and this should not be painful. Uh, number four, progress to strength and close kinetic chain stability balance type exercises as motion is restored. Stage three, is the strength closed kinetic chain stability balance type exercises emphasizing a return to function. Uh, number one, education on return to pain-free activity as tolerated. Number two, pain-free exercise progressions weaning from the sling as tolerated. This is the other pathway I was promising to help with shoulder strengthening. The scapular activation pathway uh, start with scapular retraction progress to scapular retraction with a resistance band and eventually get to band pull apart exercise. What am I leaving out? A whole bunch of stuff. There's a pec stretch pathway in my book. There's a progression to scapular strengthening. There's rows, there's planks, there's push-ups, there's lifting. That's all in my book. Oh my, was that another endorsement? Uh, that will never happen again. Uh, well, just kidding. Every video ends in same shameless self-promotion. And now that you've made it this far, the bonus treatment I was talking about, the often forgotten psychological component, we need to see our patients as more than just meat bags with problems. They're not just anatomy, they're people. And most of these people have minds, and most of the time we can influence these patients. So uh, first, encourage patients to have a positive outlook on their recovery. Patients have to buy into their recovery to, uh, to, to do well. That was this video here. Um, Empower patients with simple and appropriate exercises. This is the importance of active versus passive treatments. That was this video here. And third, educate patients about using their arm in a pain-free manner for activities of daily living. Remember we talked about fear of movement and this is my video for uh, conquering that fear of movement. So remember, the two big mistakes physios make treating shoulder pain and mostly rotator cuff tears. And mistake number one is resting too much. This, is, this can make the shoulder stiff, which isn't a bad problem. And mistake number two is moving too much. This can cause those partial tears to become full rotator cuff tears, which is what I really want to avoid. And uh, I keep telling you, don't make things worse. What do you think of my approach? Uh, am I crazy or am I a genius? Meh. Let me know in the comments below. 
My two books are now available at Amazon. What they don't teach you about documentation in physiotherapy school, a short how-to manual for successful daily note templates, and From Injury to Recovery Through Exercise, Simple Functional Exercise Progressions for Physiotherapists to Restore Lifting, Standing, Walking. Thank you for your support. Prepare to be wowed by what you're about to see, this video right here, and subscribe to embark on a journey of relentless progress. Thank you.